Brady. Man, what a week. Do you guys have a hard week, busy week, rough week? Are you tired? Are you bored? You know what? I am anything but bored. I've been frustrated a few times, but you know what? That's okay because God's got it under control. All right. So, let's see. Last week we were talking about our three guys. No, there were four guys, weren't there? Yeah, there were four guys. Do you remember who they were? One's name starts with a D, and three of them are in a Veggie Tales video. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, Daniel and Shadrach. In the Veggie Tales, they call him uh, Rag. Meshach. I forgot what he's. Uh, right. Shaq. 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 That's right, in the Veggie Tales. And Abednego. Which uh, he is Benny or a bumblebee in the Veggie Tales video. Okay, <laughs> so where were they? What country were they in? Yeah, Babylon. That's right. And what did Babylon do? How did they get there? They were captured and they were taken exile, taken prisoners. Right? Yeah. Okay. And we talked about how there was a prophet named Jeremiah, and Jeremiah told all of the Israelites that they were going to be in Babylon for a certain number of years. How many years was it? Five years? No, longer than that. Ten years? More than that. Seven years, that's right. Good job. I knew somebody knew it. Okay. So they, they, Jeremiah said, you're going to be there for 70 years. Daniel and his buddies and, and all the, the Israelites who were taken captive, they were, they were there. God told them to build houses, you remember, and have children and plant gardens and all that good stuff. Because he wanted them to be strong because after the 70 years, what's going to happen? They're going home. And that's what today's lesson is all about. Okay? So, and we talked a little bit about a prophet. Isaiah even told the Israelites who was going to be the king to send them home. Do you remember who that was? I know we didn't talk much about that one, but we talked about it a little bit. His name starts with a C. Cyrus. Yeah. Okay. So, the... Uh, the leader of one of those first trips back, there were actually three trips back from Babylon to Israel, okay? There were three trips back, and the leader on the first trip, I believe it was, his name was Ezra, okay? And he's got a book in the Bible. He wrote a book about his, how he put it, started, started putting everything back together because when the Babylonians came through, they pretty much wrecked it all. Alright? So Ezra led these people back and when, when, when Cyrus told them they could go and Ezra started rebuilding. So let, let's see what Ezra says. Okay? We're going to start out. It's Ezra uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read that for you. Okay? In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah was fulfilled. The 70 years was done. The Lord put it in the mind of King Cyrus to issue a proclamation throughout his entire kingdom and to put it in writing. Now see, this is very important because it's going to come back later that Cyrus put it in writing and the fact that he put it in writing helps later on. We're going to find out about that, okay? Alright, so here we go. This is, this is what the... Blah, blah, I'm sorry. This is what King Cyrus of Persia says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has, and has appointed me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Judah. Whoever is among his people, may his God be with him and may he go to Jerusalem in Judah and build the house of the Lord. The God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem. Let every survivor... Wherever he lives, be assisted by the men of that region with silver, gold, goods, and livestock, along with the free will offering for the house of God in Jerusalem. 
So the leaders, so the family leaders of Judah and Benjamin, along with the priests and the Levites, everyone that God had motivated, prepared to go up and rebuild the Lord's house in Jerusalem. All their neighbors supported them with silver articles, gold, goods, livestock, and valuables, in addition to all that was given as a free will offering. King Cyrus also brought out, oh, oh I'm ahead of myself. No, I won't read that anyway. That's okay. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and had placed in the house of his gods. All right, so let, let's, let's, let's go back and look at that a little bit. Because what King Cyrus did was pretty big. All right? You got all these Israelites, okay? They've been prisoners in a foreign land. The country that came in and defeated them took all of their, their special things out of the temple, the, specials, the, the special things that they needed in order to worship God. They took the, King Nebuchadnezzar and his army took that out of the temple. So they didn't have the stuff that they needed in order to worship God. King Cyrus, oh, oh, oh and, and he also said, you people are supposed to go back and rebuild the temple. What are they supposed to rebuild it with? Where is all that going to come from? God, through King Cyrus, said, I got this. Okay? God said, or I'm sorry, King Cyrus, in his written order, said, if they're passing through your land, let them pass. And oh, by the way, while they're going through, give them some stuff to help them out because they're going to need it. And, oh, and, and when they get to Jerusalem, you guys who are around there, give them some stuff because they, they're going to need it. They have my order to rebuild the temple, rebuild their church. I'm ordering you help them. Okay? Tell me God's not, not got some power, okay? All right. So, the people go back, and they start building. But do they get done? Let's see. That's in chapter 2. And uh, for those who are, who are following the scriptures, it's uh, verses 64 and 65 out of chapter 2. Way over here. All right, here we go. The whole combined assembly numbered 42,360 people. Okay, chapter 2 gives a listing of who's going back, okay, by family group. We summed it up because um, I, I can't really say all those names. So I would butcher them terribly. And Jewish people would be like having my head on Facebook or something. I don't know. Anyway. The total number of people, though, was 42,360, not including their male and female slaves, okay, that's 7,337, if you're following along, and 200 male and female singers, okay? And the Bible goes on in chapter 2 to talk about their animals and so forth. But, I mean, this is the stuff that they left... Uh, at that time, by that point, it, it, was, it was Babylon originally. Uh, the Medes and Persians took it over. Cyrus was a Persian king. So when they left to go home, they, that's what they had. Okay, so they got back. And I'm going to pick up with, in chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Okay. That's 9. Oh, there's 10. When the builders had laid the foundation of the Lord's temple, the priests, dressed in their robes and holding trumpets, and the Levites, descended from Asaph, holding cymbals, took their positions to praise the Lord, as King David of Israel had instructed. Hmm, that's interesting. They sang with praise and thanksgiving to the Lord, for he is good, his faithful love to Israel endures forever. Then all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because of the foundation of the Lord's house had been laid. Okay, so they got back and they got the foundation done. What's the foundation? That's the bottom part, right? Does that, does that even include the floors? No, this is just the bottom part. 
the people were so excited about it that um, that they, they, they stopped and praised God. They held a celebration just getting the foundation done. Okay? Uh, but then it started getting iffy. Chapter 4, verse 4, verse, verses 4 and 5. Let's see what's happening. Then the people who were already in the land discouraged the people of Judah and made them afraid to build. They also bribed officials to act against them to frustrate their plans throughout the reign of King Cyrus of Persia until the reign of King Darius of Persia. All right, so here's the deal, okay? They got the foundation laid. Is this any good for anything other than it marks the spot? No, it's not, okay? So we've got the foundation laid. We have a celebration. And then people start getting jealous. People start getting cranky. You know what? Those Israelites, they came back. Now they're building their temple again. Before you know it, they're going to rebel against the kingdom. And then we'll be full of, it'll be, it'll be, the, the whole place will be full of Israelites. Now who are these people that were complaining? Those were the people who had moved in after Babylon carried everybody out. Okay? Did these people love God? Not really. Did these people love God's people? No. Because what was happening was God's people were coming back to the land that God had promised them. Now, who did he make that promise to the first time? Yeah, Abraham. I knew somebody would remember it. Three promises. We'll make you, give you as many children as stars in the sky. We'll give you a country to live in. And through one of your children, I'm going to bless the world. We're going to find out about that next week. Next video, however we work that out. I'm not even sure how that's going to work yet, but we'll figure that out. Okay, so the Israelites have started building the temple. And the people in that area, they're getting all jealous and nervous and scared and all that good stuff. So they start telling all the people around, all these people, remember Cyrus said, help them, give them stuff, give them what they need. All these people who are in the region, they're looking at Cyrus, or, or, or they're looking around and going, "Yeah, not about that. We're not, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna give you as much as we originally said we would, because you know, then we won't have any, right?" But the bottom line was, they were really afraid of what the Israelite people were going to do. They were afraid the Israelite people were going to come in, rebuild their country and set it all back up and rebel against the king. And that's actually a charge they made. But we'll find out about that. Okay, I'm going to take the next passage, which is chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. temple, exactly, God's house, the house of worship, was completed on the third day in the month of Adar in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Hmm. Yeah, I need to go on. Then the Israelites, including the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles, celebrated the dedication of this house of God with joy. For the dedication of God's house, they offered, oh, catch this, okay, 100 bulls, 200 rams and 400 lambs, as well as 12 male goats as a sin offering for all of Israel, one for each Israelite tribe. Okay? What happened in between? Okay, that's kind of an interesting thing. After Cyrus died and King Darius took over, the, these people around him they kept, they kept throwing charges and, and kept taking stuff away from the people who were trying to rebuild the temple. And they eventually wrote a letter to King Darius and said, King Darius, 
These people are saying that Cyrus, king of Persia, ordered them to come home, first of all, and second of all, ordered all of us around them to give them the stuff they need to rebuild their temple. Now, King Darius, you do understand, right, that they're going to rebuild their country and then they're going to rebel against you, the king. You, you understand this, right? King Darius got the letter and he read it. And he said, hmm, search the archives. Because that's one thing that those kings did back then. They wrote everything down. I mean, everything. If somebody sneezed in the throne room, it was recorded. Okay? I mean, it's almost as bad as what, what you guys do and post on Instagram now. But anyway, everything was recorded. So King Darius said, search the archives. See if that's what Cyrus said. So they went back through and they, they searched the archives and searched the records and searched the records. And they found Cyrus's letter. Did God already see what was coming? Yeah. Did God prepare for what was for what was coming? Yeah. Did God take care of his people? Yeah. And you know what? It's just wide open. I got I gotta say it. Did God see? coronavirus or COVID-19 or whatever you want to call it. Did he see it coming? Yeah. Did he prepare for it? Yeah. Regardless of what lots of people are saying, God's not surprised by it. Okay? Did the Israelite people have to worry about the countries around them making their accusations? No. God was already on it. Do we, need, do we need to worry about coronavirus and COVID-19? No. Do we need to be smart and protect ourselves? Yes. Keep washing your hands, doing your hand sanitizer, all that good stuff. But do you need to worry about it? And the answer is no. Okay? Just like God took care of His people, God's taking care of his people. Okay? Alright. So, that's all I've got for today. That's, that's pretty much today's lesson is that God took care of his people. God's people were going back and they were, their, their first mission was to establish, to, to rebuild the church so that they could worship. Okay? Our mission now is to I think, spread some calm. Okay? When people get all anxious and worried, we can smile at them. We can, we can wave to them. Can't go shake their hands because that's not safe. But, we can still share a smile. We can still talk. Okay? And parents, if you've got questions, or if your kids are asking questions that you're not sure about and you want some help or, or you Want to, if you just want to talk about it, feel free to get in touch with, uh, with any of us here at the church. Um, Mr. Big, Melanie, me, Miss Amy, Mr. Marcus, Sean, Rachel, whoever, whatever the case may be, we'll be, we'll be more than happy to, if we don't have an answer, we will find you the answer. Okay? Alright. So, any questions at all, feel free to contact us.